Welcome again to the Hawaiian Islands Humpback Whale National Marine Sanctuary. My name is Patty Miller, and today we're going to talk about coral reefs and what exactly is a coral. You know, we all love to go snorkeling out in the ocean. We love to get into the coral reefs where all the fish, the octopus, all the cool critters are, and see what's hanging out there. But have you ever thought really about what is a coral and how does a coral grow? What, what is it? Let's take a look here at my coral reef over here. This coral reef actually is an example of dead corals. They are white because they have died. If they were in the ocean, they would be um, much more colorful. Uh, you'll notice they come in a variety of sizes and shapes, a lot of different shapes. And that shape depends on a couple of things. One is genetics, kind of like what you and your sisters and brothers, you're all a little bit different. But it also depends on where they live. Are they in shallow water? Are they in calm water? Are they in water with lots of waves? Are they strong enough to be able to take that wave kind of action? And that's partly what makes these corals different, but they're all different and unique. Now, each of these corals is made up of a whole bunch of little animals. And when we take a look up close at these, let's go ahead and take a close look at this. Every one of the little holes that you're looking out represents what we call a polyp. And a polyp is where an animal lives. It's an animal, it's a living thing. And when you put all those polyps together, you get that coral colony. They grow together, they multiply, and you begin to get that big polyp. Now ones also, besides the little holes, you'll see bumps. And each of those little bumps also represents a type of coral. I mean, sorry, a different, it represents a coral polyp. Now, we have some unique corals here. One is what's called a brain coral. Look at that guy. Looks exactly like what a brain would if you could take the uh, skin off your brain, get inside your skull, and it is called a brain coral. Has a scientific name, but easier to say brain coral. This coral is very unique. It is called a mushroom coral, and you can see why it looks exactly like a mushroom. It is only one polyp. It's not made up of thousands of polyps like the rest of these are. It is one simple polyp. Now this guy can actually move, can crawl across the ocean floor, move from place to place, where all the rest of these corals are stuck to the reef. They're stuck to each other, they're stuck to some kind of hard surface. We've got one more type of coral here that is really pretty unique, something you don't often see. It grows down in the deep, dark ocean waters, in the colder waters. It's black coral. Black coral is used to make some very fancy jewelry. Uh, they cut it off, it looks kind of like a limb of a tree. They cut slices of it, polish it up, and make jewelry from this. But this is what black coral looks like. If I would have just picked it up outside, I would think it was just a branch off of my tree. So again, a coral reef, which is made up of a whole bunch of corals, is actually a place where animals live. It's a habitat. It's like a town that we have here. And in this town, we have lots of different animals, including my giant octopus over there that's going in to take a look at everything that is there. All right, let's take a look at exactly what a coral polyp is. Now, over here, I've got a great little diagram here to show you what this is. We have the ocean here, we have Mr. Sun up in the sky, and down here is, I'm calling, let's call these rocks, okay, a bunch of rocks. Now, a coral starts out, remember, it's an animal. It is alive, and this coral, floats through the ocean, around through the ocean, as a larvae. It is a small animal that is floating through until it finds a place to settle. And once it settles, it's floating through the ocean here, it's gonna settle onto something. So my coral here is going to land onto this rock and stay there. Now, that's a soft body. It needs to be protected. How is it going to protect itself? It is going to actually secrete a type of solution called calcium carbonate. It's a type of limestone, and as that goes around our polyp, it forms a hard skeleton and protects it. So let's pretend like this skeleton is covering the whole thing, even the red part. Now, a coral polyp needs to eat. So how's it gonna eat? It's gotta have tentacles. So here we've got tentacles. I know my coral looks kind of look more like a pineapple here than it does like a coral, but um, this is my coral polyp, okay? Now, during the day, the polyp uses the sunshine to actually lure 
work like photosynthesis, like a tree does. You know, when a tree grows, it takes in the sunshine, it takes in the water from underground, um, it then produces its own food and it grows its leaves. Now, the polyp has what are called zooxanthellae, little green algae. So my little green dots here represent zooxanthellae. I love that word, zooxanthellae, zooxanthellae. Again, a type of green algae. So the little green algae helps it catch the sunlight and create food at nighttime. Simple, huh? Okay, now. Yeah. Let's think about how that coral would actually catch food. It's kind of an interesting one. If you were a coral, unless you were a mushroom coral, you'd be stuck in one place. If you can imagine living in one place, never going anywhere. How would you catch your food? How would you eat? So let's take my arm, which is my soft body, put it inside. This is a lunch bag. This becomes my hard covering. The green dots are my zooxanthellae. My hand is my tentacles, okay? During the daytime, my tentacles are inside. They're not gonna get in the way of those zancelli catching that sunlight. They're resting, probably going to sleep. During the nighttime, the zooxanthellae cannot work. There's no sunshine. So the tentacles come out when all the little critters are swimming through the water and they're catching those minute little things swimming through the ocean. So what you can do, and I would recommend doing this one outside, is that you have a food source. All of you connect your arms together somewhere on a table, someplace where you cannot move. All you can do is move your tentacles. How much food can you catch? First of all, you gotta put some stick, double sticky tape on your fingers so that you can catch something. In this case, I'm going to throw some popcorn up in the air and see what I can catch in food. It looks like I caught maybe one kernel down here, but I'm gonna be pretty hungry. Shows you how difficult this is to catch the food. Again, that's a way you can look at, at how a coral eats. Uh, do a little competition there, see which ones of you are better at this. Now, I want you to also make a coral yourself. So, we're going to make one here out of some items that I have. My coral's kind of a sweet treat. And this coral is going to be made out of, you can see marshmallows, graham crackers, pretzels, icing, and some green sprinkles. And I bet you've already figured out what is what part. Let's take your graham cracker. This is your hard substrate, your hard surface, your rock, whatever you call it. Your marshmallow, easy guess, is your soft body. Now your marshmallow, remember, has to stick to your substrate. So it's going to secrete that limestone, that calcium carbonate, that is going to create, it's kind of like a, well, kind of like a glue, sticks it to my rock, then makes that hard surface on the bottom, cover your marshmallow then with icing and this becomes my hard covering on my my skeleton on my um, coral it protects it and I get this all the way around on my uh, soft body there then you can guess the next one this is easy the tentacles are the pretzels so I give myself some tentacles here and then zooxanthellae. What are you gonna use for zooxanthellae? Well, the easiest thing is little green sprinkles from Christmas, okay? Got your green sprinkles instead of cookies. We're gonna give it zooxanthellae. It now has the algae that it needs to produce its own food. If I had a whole bunch of these, I would put them together side by side. And once you put these things side by side, they become that coral colony. They grow together making that huge coral colony that sticks together. I want to take a minute here, though, and let's take a step back and think about who might eat a coral. Here in Hawaii, we know that parrotfish love to eat corals. They'll eat the coral, they will digest the algae that's in it, that's the good part for them. They don't need all that, they've ground up all the coral with their teeth, they become, becomes a very sandy-like solution, it actually does become sand, because that coral kind of, you know, that parrotfish gets rid of it, poops it out, guys, become sand on our beaches. So it's some of what our white sand is, is actually coming from the parrotfish eating the coral and then giving it up. So your challenge here, you're probably hungry after watching this, is go find some foods, make yourself a snack, but make it be a coral polyp. Maybe you use a banana with some peanut butter around it. Maybe you do what I did here, but what can you have for your soft body, your skeleton around it, your tentacles, and your zooxanthellae, big word. 
One more thing I want you to do is to now create your own coral reef. I've started one here where I just drew a bunch of squiggly shapes and these are my corals. Corals are not anything in particular. They are estimates of what corals would look like. They're all a little different. Mine look like they have the chicken pox, but each of those little dots is being a coral polyp, is representing a coral polyp. And then I've just added fish to mine. See what you can add to yours. Maybe do a little bit of research. What lives in a coral reef? Add some octopus, some turtles, some fish. Maybe there's a shark that's coming in to eat. Who lives in your coral reef? But create your coral reef, guys. Make a snack of a coral polyp. Make a coral reef and have some fun. Thank you.